Shalom family and welcome to Into All Truth. I pray that this message glorify Yahuwah, our Abba Yah, and that the Ruach Kodesh would lead you into all truth, that the Ruach Kodesh would give you a spirit of wisdom, revelation, and knowledge, spirit, and that the words that I speak in this message would find fertile ground in your heart and spirit and bring forth fruit in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Shalom family and welcome to Into All Truth. So today I want to talk to you guys about Yeshua of the Bereans. So Yeshua in Tanakh or the Old Testament, which is something I've wanted to cover for a really long time. So it's going to be a long series and uh, I may just do it about once a week and then I'll have other, other stuff probably in between that. So what I'm going to start off first with is Bereshit, with the first mention um, that we know of, of Yeshua in the Old Testament, in Genesis. And uh, some of you guys may be familiar with this, but there are other people who are not. So let's get into it. Now, I find in this Hebrew movement that we're starting to run across people who don't believe in Yeshua or that Yeshua is actually in the Old Testament. And so in response to that, I just wanted to go back to this fundamental. And as well, among the Christians, of course, it's the same problem. They're saying he's not in the Old Testament. The Old Testament, rather, is not relevant. And so the scripture that I always go to is Acts 17, 11, which says, And the Bereans were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Now, when you put this to a Christian, they're in their mind, they tend to imagine that this is the New Testament. But of course, there was no New Testament around. The New Testament was being written as they were <laughs> experiencing Acts, because this is Acts 17, 11. So um, this is why this series is called Yeshua of the Ber Bereans in Tanakh. And... Another reason, another scripture that um, really calls to mind the security that we have of Yeshua throughout the book is in Psalm 41, 7, and it says, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O Abba, Yah. Yea, thy law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips. O Yahuwah, thou knowest. So this is the scripture where Yeshua tells us that he is from the beginning of Tanakh all the way through to the Brit Hadashah, the renewed covenant. And so we can rest assured in this scripture so the question might you might be asking yourself is when does Yeshua enter into the scripture now Yah says I am the Alpha and the Tav the beginning and the end and we know that in the New Testament it says in the beginning was the word and by the word were all things made and that Yeshua is the word made flesh so by him all things were made and this is why I show this yod symbol is symbol of the right hand of Yah because ultimately Yah tells Yeshua to sit down at his right hand and so it is his right hand that forms all things and so at the very beginning of Tanakh in uh, Bereshit, Bereshit we have Yeshua showing up in the first word. So the title of the book that we know as Genesis, which means in the beginning or the beginning, is actually Bereshit in Hebrew, which means in the beginning or the beginning. And when we break down Bereshit, we find that Yeshua is right here in the first word. And of course, in Hebrew, you read from right to left. 
and I'm using the ancient Hebrew pictographic script just because I find it more accessible and understandable. And so let's just go into it and break it down um, two letters at a time to just understand how this word is put together. And the best way is to start with the beginning of the alphabet. And the first two letters of the Hebrew alphabet are the Aleph and the Bayet. And uh, the Aleph symbolizing the ox, the strong power, which is Yah. So that's why he says, I am the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the end. It means strength of the house, of the tent. And so when we put A and Aleph and Bayat together, we get the word Ab or Abba, which is the name of our father. And so when we put these two letters together, we understand that the Aleph is the strength of the tent, is the tent pole of the house. He holds up the house or the tent. Okay. And so simply broken down, um, tent, Bayat means tent, family, house, earth, earth, in. And so that is the home, that is the earth. It's usually feminine. The Aleph is masculine. And the earth that we were created from, the dust of the earth, is female. And so this is a picture of the earth as seen from above, from Yah's position. And Yah sits above the circle of the earth. And he says he has stretched out the heavens as a tent for us to dwell in. So this is the tent that he sits over, and this is the house that we live in. So let's break down the first two letters again of the word Bereshit, and that is the Bayat and the Resh. So now Resh means head. This is the second letter that comes after Bayat. Okay, and we've already talked about what Bayat means. And so when we have Bayat beside Resh, and Resh means highest head, first, top, most important person, beginning and or fist, strong hand, and this gives an R sound as in Resh. And you may be familiar with the word bar, which means sun. And so uh, when we have B, and Resh, we have the word bar, which means sun, ba and ra, right, Resh, so ba'ar. And um, when Jews talk about their son having a bar mitzvah, they define bar mitzvah as the son of the law. Uh, but when I broke it down, the word bar mitzvah translated into the Hebrew letters, it means son of or head of the house over water sown in the earth and secured by a sign or covenant of security. That's actually what bar mitzvah means. And of course, there's no V's in Hebrew, so all V's are W, so it's bar mitzvah. And so this is the picture that we get. We get the picture of the son of the house when we look at these two letters, bayat and resh. So when we move on to the next two letters, the Aleph and the Shin, as we've talked about, Aleph means head first, the tent pole, strong power, leader, the ram or bull. Of course, its numerical value is one. It's number one. And then uh, the next letter is the Shin, and its number is number 300. And it means devouring teeth, destruction, and destroying. Together, the two letters mean destroying fire. And so when we two, put the two words together and we sound them out, what kind of word do you think we get? We get the word aish. Aish. It's interesting because when Koreans swear, they say aish. <laughs> and where do we find the word aish? Well, if we go to Isaiah 44, 21, the word is used here, and it says, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. And so in this uh, verse, as well as uh, when it's talked about, it says that I will cause you to pass through the fire. And also when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walk 
through the fire, through the ash, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. We are talking about a consuming fire. So when we hear our Yah, our, the Most High Yah is a consuming fire. This is a purifying fire, the fire of purification. And so um, this is the kind of fire that we're always referencing when Yah is talking about purifying us as silver or gold. And so the last two letters of Bereshit are the Yod and the Tav. And I've already talked about when Yah says, I am the Alpha and the, o, the Tav, the Alpha, the beginning and the end. And I've already talked about the Yod being the right hand of Yah, who is Yeshua, the right hand of Yah. And so the Yod, its value is number one. And it's used in the word Yahuwah, so in the name of our Creator, and it's also used in the name Yahshua. Yah is our salvation. And so the Yod means give, the right hand, worship, work, hand of deliverance. And then um, the Tav is the mark or the sign or the covenant or the seal. Okay? And so um, its value is 400. And we even hear mention of the Tav, actually the mark, when Canaan is marked by Yah so that other people don't kill him after he's killed Abel. So sometimes it can be a curse. Sometimes it can mean a tree of life. And it takes on various meanings. Uh, but when we combine them together, it is the delivering hand, the right hand given for deliverance for this, as a sign, a covenant, and a seal. So when we put all of these letters together and we say Bereshit, what do you think the entire meaning is? When we look at the entire meaning of the word Bereshit, it means the son of Yah is destroyed by his own hand on the cross to secure the covenant, basically. And so how does this line up with in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yah, and the word was Yah, and that Yah is the Aleph and the Tav? Well, in Isaiah 46.10, Yah says, I am Yahuwah, and there is no other, declaring the end from the beginning. So from the very first word of Scripture and the very first book is that the son of Yah is destroyed by his own hand on the cross to secure the covenant with his people. And what is the first thing that happens in scripture? Well, Genesis 1, 2 to 3 says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Ruach of Yah moved upon the face of the waters. And Abba Yah said, Let there be light. And there was light. And so who is the light of the world? Well, John 8.12 says, Then spake Yeshua, again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world, for he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And John 9 says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And so here we have the first manifestation of Yeshua in the form of light, 
but he's also the creating hand of Yah. So next we're going to look at Yeshua in the Garden of Eden. And Genesis 3.8 says, And they heard the voice of Yahuwah Elohim walking in the garden in the cool, and the word for cool here is ruach, of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Most High amongst the trees of the garden. Now this is the first time the person of Yah is said to be walking the earth among men, aside from when he formed them with his hands. So what is the presence of Yah? Yahuwah and Elohim is what he's called in this instance. And at this point, Adam and Eve are now sons of Yah. Sons and daughters of Yah, they are now mere men because they have fallen. But the Most High's presence is what they hide from. He was present. Well, what does presence mean? When we look further into the word presence, it says that Adam and Eve hid from the presence of Yah. And the, the word actually is panim, panim in Hebrew. And so uh, when we look at it, the Hebrew word in Strong's, it is translated as face, presence, person, face of a seraphim or cherubim, face of animals, face, surface of ground from before the face of. So here's other translations, the countenance, uh, form, sight, person. So we see that, that Yeshua becomes the face of Yah, the human yet miraculous godly form of Yah. And so this is the panim, the presence that was in the garden with Adam and Eve, who spoke to them and walked with them. So this is another manifestation of Yeshua in the garden, in the beginning of the book of Genesis or Bereshit. But if this is the presence of Yah, why does the word say that no man can see the Most High and live? Thou cannot see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. Okay? So how is it that Adam and Eve were able to see and fear the presence of Yah. Even John 1.18 says, No man has seen the Most High at any time, only the begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. He hath declared him. So um, when we break down this scripture in John 1.18, and we look at the word declared. Declared is the Greek word eskegiomi, declared, which means to lead out, to be the leader, to go before. Uh, it's a metaphor, to draw out in narrative, unfold a teaching, to recount, rehearse, to unfold, declare the things relating to the Most High. And then we look, when we look at Hebrews 1, 2 through 3, the word says, Yah, in these last days, hath spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and the upholding of all things by the word, Yeshua is the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So again, the, the word also says, Yah says that there is none beside him. Yet Yeshua sits down on in this scripture it says, on the right hand of the majesty on high. So he is 
the right hand of Yah. By him, through Yah, he formed man and woman. And from the beginning, it was determined that he would destroy by his own hand himself to deliver mankind on the cross. So in the next part of ser the series, we'll talk about three instances of Yeshua's appearance to the three patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and possibly Joseph and Moshe. So guys, thank you so much for watching. So I'll continue with the series and I'm going to go on to the patriarchs, uh, the first three patriarchs in Tanakh. And so may Yah bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious and lift the light of his countenance and give you peace. Shalom. See you in the next one. And guys, remember, if you want a copy of the calendar, you can download it. Once you sign up uh, at livelightwell.com for my email list, and I request that you make a donation of three to seven dollars or more. And as well, if you're interested in my recipe book, Chaya Eat Life and Fast, it can also be downloaded through Dropbox, and both of them are also available on Amazon. See you in the next one. Shalom. Chaya.